All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our SG Tech webinar series. My name is Ivan. Uh, apologies, we had some technical errors earlier. So welcome to our session. Thank you so much for joining us here today. So today we want to talk about staying healthy, going digital in the isolation economy, resources and solutions to help businesses work from home, such as government grants and support. We are so happy today to have so many of you guys joining us uh, in this special webinar. So before I get started, as I always want to give a safe harbor statement, uh, the information shared in this webinar really meant for the intention of education and learning purposes. Please always seek your own independent legal and accounting advice before conducting any business or investment decision. All our efforts have been taken to make sure that our content is as relevant as possible, but we appreciate and uh, apologize if there's any mistake made. All right, so my name is once again, guys, is Ivan. Uh, I'm a co ops counselor with SG Tech. So I'm very pleased today to be leading this uh, series about the isolation economy. So what is SG Tech? I think a lot of you here are new to us. SG Tech is the trade association for the tech industry in Singapore. We represent more than 900 members all the way from startup to the bigger boys out there in the market, covering items such as industry news, uh, helping them and representing the tech sector. Now, given the situation right we're in right now, the circuit breaker being extended to 1st June, we understand how hard and trying is it for so many of our SME members in, uh, in the community. So this is why we brought together the isolation economy. Now, I want to bring up something new to you. After this sharing today, there'll be something called the Solution Toolbox. The Solution Toolbox is our new series that shares with you other ideas and really easy to use solutions that might be relevant to you in implementing working from home. I ask that you guys continue staying with us till today so that you can be able to share with us this sharing session afterwards. All right, but we already have some solution available. Some of the solution available are right now inside uh, isolation.sg. Uh, you will be able to see about five to six solutions with demos and videos and special pricing available for SMEs in Singapore. Now, these are some of our SG Tech members. Uh, they are SME as well. So I strongly ask you guys go and check it out and be able to see some of the demos and uh, items available on the solution toolbox. All right. As well, I want to point out a few other webinars upcoming. Uh, we have a few other webinars coming today. One of them will be uh, on data protection. The data protection is the next one upcoming, followed by cybersecurity. And last but not least, e-commerce, all right? These are the dates and the timing is always 12.30 to about 1.30 to 2 o'clock. Uh, I think these are really good series and strongly recommend you guys to as well sign up for the session as well. So after this, uh, after this session is over, you guys will be asked to do a survey. But even now, during the, uh, even now, please help us. I really stress again to help us do the survey. Uh, a lot of you have been actively filling up the survey after each session, but many still don't. I ask that you help us help the industry. We are stronger together. By helping us fill up this survey, we can get better responses and be able to put together stronger, more relevant feedback to the government. Uh, the government, I believe, are listening to a lot of the SMEs concern. Uh, and this is one way we can collectively together give our ideas and thoughts and feedback back to them. So help us fill in the survey, all right? Okay, so a few other things today. The slides will be available about two hours later on isolation.sg or SG Tech website. Uh, as well, a recording of this session is also available on our YouTube channel. And last but not least, we have the Q&A function. Uh, so please go and help us answer it on the Q&A function. All right, so please help us Q&A function. Now, I see some of the questions, uh, guys, uh, for those of you who are used to using Zoom meetings, this is a special version of Zoom. It is called the webinar. So all of you guys are automatically muted. Uh, there's no way for you guys to unmute yourself. Uh, this helps us present our lectures in an easier format. And of course, the best way to reach out to us later will be through the Q&A function. So we will not uh, be able to see your faces or your voices, but help us. And if you have questions for us, fill it in in the Q&A function and we will help you look into it after the session is over. So once again, guys, stay home, safe life. All right, stay home, safe life. Okay, so we have four parts today. Uh, working from home, setting it up, putting it all together. And last but not least, I'm very happy to have IMDA with us today to talk to you guys about some of the grants and support mechanism that they have as well available for SMEs. So let's get started. Working from home, who is it and what can you do? 
So as we all know, Singapore is entering an even more stricter measure for circuit breaker. We ask that companies that are essential services continue working, uh, of course, but at the safe distance. Uh, essential services to support the functions such as uh, retail, uh, accounting, human resource, where possible to work from home. And all of us should really find a way to either work from home or pause work. We understand that for certain sectors such as hairdressing, uh, service, or, or something physical in nature, it's impossible to work from home. So take this time to have a good break uh, away from a hectic life in Singapore and be able to take some time, spend time with your family and enjoy uh, this opportunity as well. But for majority of us, the circuit breaker or COVID-19 has forced us to take a long and hard look at the situation here. Uh, what I mean by this is this, what work can be done, how work is done, where work can be done, and is this a future of work? So even before I want to go into the solutions available to help you work from home in staying digital, stay safe, right? Stay healthy. Let's talk about work. Now, all of us love working, right? To a certain extent, so we are all SME here and we love working. So we want to be very clear, right? Circuit Breaker today has caused us to be able to work from home. It has caused us to shift our mindset to working from home, or what I call remote working. This is practiced by a lot of the bigger MNCs out there. And, we are, and, and this chance gives us the ability to, because we are forced to work from home. So this is enable because of technology. Technology allows us to be able to work from home effectively. But to the SME out there, I want to remind you guys something. The future of work is still coming. Working from home is not the future of work. Working from home is just one small part about the future of work. The very nature of all our work and our life will change. And it's very important now that we take this opportunity, this six weeks left in the circuit breaker, to have a hard and long look at how we can change the nature of our work. Because if we don't do that, technology will change it for us. We can today stay at home, teleconference with you guys because technology enables it. But the next wave of technology is going to change the nature of our work. Automation is going to change everything. Right, things that we require human today might very soon be replaced by technology and artificial intelligence. We are five years before the very face of work is changing. And this circuit breaker has shown us something. The change will be even faster. As we are so more afraid now to go out and, and to socially mingle with each other, technology is going to have a bigger impact on the future of work very soon. So if you look at the Venn diagram or pie chart, remote working today, one very small part about the future of work. All right, so take note of this, that remote working is a very small part about the future of work. So think about that, make sure that you are able to. So today, we just wanna focus on remote working. So to, globally speaking, half of us are now confined to home. Malaysia has changed the MCO order by another two or three more weeks. Philippines today as well has announced extension, uh, India as well. We continue being faced with the fact that a lot of us are working from home. This is a good news, guys. Uh, not because we do not want to go out, but this is good news because that means that even if your SME is selling to anywhere in the world today, including America, Europe, China, they are more comfortable not requiring you to visit them. Okay? Visiting them and meeting your customers is an expensive proposition. When you go and visit them, there's air flight, hotels, there's carbon pollution. Today, because you can work from home and it's acceptable more, this is good time to train customers that you are dealing with, including Singapore customers, to be more comfortable reaching out with you in an e-commerce format, such as what I'm doing with you now, so that customers, after even after the circuit breaker, will not require you to fly in and expensive visit them. So where we are seeing is that this is a good trend for all of us because we can spend more time in our own country and spend lesser time trying to travel for work. So globally speaking, another thing to take note is this. The high earners have more options to work from home. 75 to 100% part of the income gap, 60% of them can work from home versus at the lower gap, say to 0 to 25% part. What this means as well for a lot of us is this. Just because on 2nd June, if the circuit breaker is lifted, doesn't mean suddenly everybody will return to work. The more true reality is this. At the higher end of the circle, if your company today rely on servicing someone at the highest end of the percentile of the income, they will likely not be in the workplace. So for example, if you are a food and beverage outlet in CBD that sells very expensive food, for example, you should not expect that just because on 2nd June, the circuit breaker is lifted, bam, all the bankers will go back. That is not 
going to be the case anymore as companies are more attuned to working from home and as well we are so scared of second third and fourth wave of COVID-19 so be very well aware that just because second June if our circuit breaker is lifted uh, doesn't mean that your business will resume this is a good time now to think about the future of work in your organization okay so let's talk about who can work from home the Singapore style my take is this everyone who has colleagues or your employees in desk bound job you practically can work from home all right if you are sitting on a desk before COVID-19 it's highly likely that your work can be done remotely yes today we'll address the security issue how the paper goes but more or less you can work from home unfortunately for some of us who are in the delivery food physical activity such a hairdresser and you require interacting with the customer on a face-to-face -face basis it's likely that your job will not be able to work from home by the nature of it itself. So think about this, the red color section and the green color. Look at your organization and put them into the graph. So for example, uh, and as well, we'll be providing you an Excel sheet on isolation.sg after this session is over. A very simple Excel sheet will help you do that. You know, look at all your employees, Mr. A, Ms. B, Madam C, and you think about the nature of work. First thing first, decide whether they are desk or physical activity. Sometimes it can be a collection of both. They can be both desk and physical as well. So think of it and think of what they can do or cannot do at home. And then think of the remote work function available to them after the sharing is over. All right. So there are many, many, many things that you can do. I cannot do. And think about whether you can. So even before you get started on all the solution and buying stuff for your participant, it's very important to think about who can work from home and who cannot work from home as well. So that's the first step. Now, moving on, and this is how, let's say you assume and you found out that what a vast majority of your employees are able to work from home. And, you know, a lot of SME, they were thinking that, you know, since the circuit breaker was four weeks, let's take a break, right? Let's get everyone to have a nice little break uh, for four weeks before we resume work. Unfortunately, because circuit breaker is extended by another four more weeks and we are only halfway or one third the way done, we now need to think that we cannot give employees a uh, six weeks holiday anymore, right? Because uh, work has to resume. So welcome to the new reality. And now this section wants to give you guys a framework, uh, a, a clear guide to think about how you can effectively set up employees to work from home successfully. So we call it the three A's, all right? Just three A's to remember about ability, accessibility, and agility, all right? Ability, accessibility, and agility. Let's start with the first A, which is ability. You need infrastructure by employees to work from home. Now, once you have the basic infrastructure, you know, it's like going to a factory, it's like going to a restaurant, right? The restaurant needs a kitchen, right? Although you cannot eat anything in the first place, right? The next one is that accessibility. You need them to have tools. What's the good as a kitchen if they don't have pots, there's no pants, you cannot do anything. And last but not least, you need to have the mental capacity. This is new in the working from home era. Your colleagues and your, your friends and your employees need to have the mental capacity and the adaptability to work from home because, you know, and I'm broadcasting you from my home right now, it's a different environment, right? Uh, my bed is literally two meters away from me uh, and, and, and things change, right? You know, it's so much easier to take a break. Uh, there are pros and cons. There are also uh, side effects of working from home. So we talk about that as well. So let's start with ability, all right? What is ability? The question is, this, do your employees have the right setup at home to work from home? So what is right setup? They need three things as a basic, and that's about it. The first thing they need, of course, is internet connection. All right, if there's no internet connection, uh, it's, not, it's, not even it's not even possible to work from home, right? So internet connection can be wired or wireless. Uh, I probably not recommend you guys to have a cell phone network as a 3G tethering or 4G tethering for a thing. And the cost involved will be cost the internet bill plus say a router. Uh, I think the good news is that majority of Singaporean house uh, all have internet connection. It's a base necessity. But for those of your employees that uh, are, might not have internet connection at home, uh, this is a chance you know, for, them, for you to have a conversation with them about if they need to set up internet at home uh, so that they can work from home. Six weeks is a very long time. Uh, you know, if it's only four weeks, I would say that you know, those employees probably can just do uh, on the cell phone or something. But looking at this right now, they probably need to talk about internet connection at their house. The next thing for ability is the IT setup. Uh, I, I know, once again, all of this are very simple and very commonsensical item. But I just thought, you know, just make sure that you have your employees have all this three. 
Now, a lot of us are very used to desktop working. In my office today, I still use a desktop as well. And suddenly, uh, we have to run out and get laptop for employees. Okay, so laptops are uh, the base necessity. As an additional thing, for people working in document setting, accountants, lawyers, legal, I strongly recommend to consider getting them additional screen, uh, you know, a 27-inch or a 21-inch screen that will boost productivity by 32%. Uh, just because a laptop screen is very small, you have to screen and so forth. So think about certain situation where you need. Now, some of you uh, have said that there's not enough laptops out there in the market. That's a very true fact now, since every shop is closed. Uh, you know, if you have a desktop in office, since it's six more weeks, uh, and another option as well is to bring back the desktop to your house for your employees as well. And last but not least, I think you need a table and environment. Uh, you cannot say, let me find on my bed. The bed is not a workplace is not effective. And working from home is also very important to think about environment setting that makes sense for you. Now, a lot of us have kids as well, so it might not make sense to, uh, we might not have the facility or the space to separate the work from the kids because you have to monitor them while they study, but at least you have a proper room set up that feels different from your house helps a lot. So three things for the ability side, internet, IT, and table and environment. All right, so that is for ability. Everybody needs this tree and thing, and you need to start with that. The next one now that people don't actively think about is then the accessibility part. Employee needs access to the tools, all right? Like a chef needs your pans and your, and your uh, baking equipment. Uh, employees that you have need software, all right? The key thing is this, files and software. We are in the digital era. Most of the time, we have files, all right? Files can be physical files as well, guys. A lot of times, we have paper files but you need files and software that you use at work, you now need to be translated back to home, okay? You still need to have a home. And additionally, as an additional item here, you need something new, it's called communication software. Why? Because we're no longer in an office setting. It's not like last time that you go to office and you can shout, hey, hi, can I get me this? You now need to have some form of communication software to simulate that human contact that is not present anymore. So let's go through this three. Within the accessibility, let's put it into three sections. Files, software, communication, and underpinning it all is the data security component, okay? I know some of you guys are, depending on which of your stage of your development for the SME is, some of you guys are thinking about data security, some of you are not thinking not, it's fine. Think first about the files, software, and communication, then we can worry about data security. So what is files? Files are the driver of work, all right? If you have no access to files, you cannot do anything, right? You need graphic software. Uh, you have a PDF file, your document, your spreadsheet, your Excel sheets. These are all the files. So think about it now. In your organization, where are the files? Are they on individual company laptops, meaning you, you don't even have a file drive and people are emailing each around? Are they on local area network? Very common, right? You have a little server in your office and everybody plugged into the thing. Or best, they're on some form of cloud drive. Where are they now? Individual, cloud drive, or LAN? So if they are individual employee computers and local area network, this is the imperative for you now to move into the cloud era. You need files so the employees can find the files. You know, you cannot be, you know, especially now you're working from home and sometimes we have employees with kids, right? They need to look after kids. You cannot be waiting on Miss Lim to handle the lunch before she sends you the, the invoice, for example. Employees need access to a common service where all the files are together. This is the basic of working from home. You need the files access. So make sure you have some form of cloud drive. Uh, it can be Microsoft Cloud Drive. It can be a solution provider. It can be Dropbox. There are so many things. But as long as all the files are available and stop emailing files around the office, files should always be pulled from a central cloud drive. Okay, some examples of Cloud Drive are Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. These are some very, very good examples of uh, access to Cloud Drive that you guys need to have. Now, I have one to recommend here. Uh, Easy Share is one of our solution vendor within the ICT community at SG Tech. Uh, I know some of you guys are still struggling to even take your files and put it on the Cloud Drive uh, because a lot of these cloud services provider are all off the shelf. So one thing you can do is you can message that. Uh, they have a demo available on isolation.sg, the website. And basically it costs about $600 a year for five people, including a discount now. They can help you do some form of consultancy to talk about where your files are and helping you bring it online. All right, so this is one good way to support a great Singapore company 
uh, in this session as well. All right, putting your thoughts on a cloud drive. Next, let's talk about software. Employees also need software to work, right? Now, software has so much things, right? What kind of software? So I put them into three tiers. The first one is basic work, support, followed by specialized. So basic work is things that majority of us need on a day-to-day -day basis. We need documents and spreadsheet. We need uh, ability to write notes, ability to send emails. These are basic work software. If you guys don't have this on the employee laptop, meaning the employees are literally getting a laptop with no software, they can't open Microsoft Office, they cannot open a, a Google Sheet, there's no point, right? So you need to have some form of basic work software available. Then for certain functions, there are very specific software. For example, your HR, sorry, your HR colleagues might need HR uh, payroll software and claim software. And last but not least, specialized functions and software for function. For example, your designer should probably have Photoshop. Uh, your computer scientist probably will have Joomla support. There are very specific software for different needs. Okay. Now, the great news is this. Everything I have listed are now available on cloud. Okay. You can access this tool remotely. The shift by the ICT, the technology sector, has been to make all of this software digitally available. Okay. If your current software you're using, especially accounting, is not on cloud, once again, since the business has slowed down a bit, this is a great opportunity now to take advantage of the slowdown in business and invest forward. Make your operation leaner and more efficient by investing in the software and on cloud. All right, think about that. Then there will be additional support right now given the IMDA Enterprise Singapore Productivity Solution Grant, which we will cover later. So one other great vendor example I always like to point out is one of our friends called Payboy. HR software on the cloud is a, help you do leave claims and medical management for five people SME, about $200 a year. And basically everyone can claim through a common platform, all cloud-based, so much easier to manage. So think about using this as well. All right. And the last part uh, before we go to security is communication access. Okay. We all need some form of communication access. Co-working space works because we like working with each other, you know, right? A lot of us running startup is like, hey, why you pay money to sit on a desk in a co-working space, right? Why can't you just work from home? Because we like the ambience noise. We like having the fact that there are other human beings around us working. So now suddenly you take away that, right? And your employees only see their family members every day. It's a bit tough, yeah? Uh, they don't have the sense of coffee's really. So you need to create a sense of workplace dynamism. Right? I've given a few things, right? What works for things like one-on-one -on -one call, video conferencing, chat, emails. These are the reasons for them. But let's be very clear what you need for majority of SME. First thing first, you need a chat application software. Please do not use WhatsApp for this purpose. It's a very bad option. WhatsApp is already invaded by the employee's personal life. If you use your work, you know, they no longer have a separation between you and their personal life. You know, there are so many free chat software out there for Microsoft Teams to select. Uh, to some of us in ICT vendor community has even built our own chat application software. By having a chat application software, you know, you can basically put and make sure all the work stuff are in the same channel so you can easily find them. And it's also good to have a fun channel in the chat software such as uh, employees daily cooking. You know, show a picture of what you cook every day. It's a fun and easy way to make it fun, all right? Now, we also need video conferencing software. So today, one of the biggest and most popular one is Zoom, but there are so many other options out there. Why? Sometimes it helps to look at you face-to-face -face and have the ability to work with your employees and communicate with them in a nice setting. So you also need this. So these are the two basic you need, all right? Some of the software again, you know, uh, video conferencing, we have Zoom, which is very popular now. But don't forget, we also have companies like WebEx, uh, uh, available from Cisco system. They are also offering it free for a limited amount of time because of COVID-19. So one of the better one that combines both chat application and video conferencing will be from Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft uh, has this thing called Microsoft Teams. It's a great way to have chat and video software in the same place. So you are able to put everything in together. They have an upcoming session so they can talk to you guys about how the different sessions are. So do consider talking to them and um, they will give you guys some examples and demo as well. All right. And last but not least, the last part of accessibility, underpinning all of this is then, of course, data security. How can we manage data secure uh, thing, right? So you guys are wondering, my, my files, most are cloud software. If they are on like a cloud platform, majority of the time, they are already protected. 
the vendors have already invested a amount of money into making sure your data is secure and won't be hackable from outside vendors. Now, if you buy software like Microsoft Office or you use Google Drive, they are handled by the vendors and communication shared software like Microsoft Teams, WhatsApp even, are end-to-end -end encrypted. So the only kind of situation that you are very fearful for is within your own computer. Things that you're doing on your computer today, what happens if a hacker were to access a vulnerability into your laptop and your computer itself? One thing that I can recommend people is a virtual private network. So a virtual private network uh, is not too expensive, maybe about $100 a year, basically secures each of your employee network. So it's a software, they turn it on, and basically it secures the data link between the computer and the outside world. It basically makes sure that the whole pipeline is not being infiltrated by a potential hacker or by other vendors. It basically masks it up. It is, of course, not the only way to data secure your organization, but this is one of the easiest and uh, most cost affordable option for SME. My basic thinking is that uh, you might not be able to invest in, say, a $30,000 data security uh, uh, framework, but at least you have some form of basis to get started with in terms of data security. All right. And last but not least, I just want to spend some time on this and it's called agility. So we talk about ability, accessibility. The last thing is this, agility. Now, you know, we always ask and, and always the Tao case that talk to me and say, hey, you know, Ivan, uh, now that we're working from home, uh, is productivity gain, maintained or lost? Now, the truth is that it's probably in between them. It depends on your organization. Uh, it's not true that just because you're working from home and your employees are distracted by, say, their family life, they are lower in productivity. You know, China is one clear example. Uh, because China had the ability to lock down earlier than us, uh, we, we can look at some case example. So you guys know Ctrip, uh, which is trip.com. Uh, this is from a McKinsey research. Ctrip basically sent a service rep home instead of putting them in office. And this is something amazing. After they gotten used to the fact that they work from home, the productivity for employees working from home is higher. Look at the green line. Why is it higher? Many, 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 many reasons. But one thing people feel in this style of research is that they have control of their time, right? Uh, and most importantly, you save time traveling to work. So I do not believe that uh, working at home fully is a good idea. You know, people need a human interaction with each other. But given the current situation we're in, it is not true that, oh, just because my employees at home, productive is a job. It, it requires a new thinking about it. So do four things uh, for a thing. First thing first, maintain a regular schedule. You know, if you wake up at nine o'clock every day, do not just because you're working from home, wake up at 11. Set boundaries, right? Especially for uh, employ uh, SME owners here. I know it's so easy now to message your employees at 11 p.m., 1 a.m. Uh, try not to. They also need your own personal time. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's a typo. Take lots of breaks. All right, uh, personally speaking, uh, for those of you who've been watching my webinar series, you realize that I've been gaining weight. Uh, that's because I'm eating too much pokey here. So way too much pokey, very, very bad. But take breaks, all right? You can be exercising, doing 30 push-ups, take breaks. And last but not least, for SME owners here, always over-communicate. Uh, do not, you know, people say, hey, what if I never message my employee uh, once a day, uh, once a day? Well, I would say that it's good for them to know that you actually are still thinking of them. Uh, working from home has created us to be very isolated. That's why we call it the isolation economy. So we are all not feeling a sense of camaraderie. I think it's very important that bosses uh, check in with the employees every day. But do not make it into like a morning 9 a.m. call. Good morning, everyone. Are you at your table? That's very stressful. Yeah? Employees feel very stressed to wake up at a certain time you know, to get started on working. You know? They might be better working at a later time because they have to get their kids to school. So don't do that, but still over-communicate. Make sure you have check-in. And something to recommend is you know, maybe do a one-on-one -on -one call with them every employee once a week. Uh, or get your managers to do that. It helps to create the mental capacity to work from home, all right? So one of our another ICT companies, uh, not per se the most uh, ICT firm, uh, but one of our member companies is called Growth Beans. Uh, you know, it's completely free. You know, if you need some form of advice to transition your employees to work from home, or you know, maybe your employees feel very stressed and feel that they need someone to talk to, uh, Growth Bean is now offering some form of support, uh, completely free for everyone. So check out the website and talk to them. And uh, we know them very well. They are a member company at SGTAP. So talk to them and they can give you guys some guidance and support as well. All right. So last but not least in my sharing today, let's put all of this thing together. Uh, let's, we already talked about this, right? So Mr. A, Ms. B, and Madam C. So of course, those that can do it remote work, fine. But what if those that cannot do remote work? You know, uh, for example, if I'm a, say a hairdresser, 
uh, and, and you cannot do accounting. Think about transferring roles over. You know, one thing I think a lot of SME can do now is create social media content. Uh, do things like, hey, you know, we're a hairdresser, we are closed for the month, but let us now focus on putting up fun content every week. Uh, get the hairdresser to express his creativity by doing something different. Just post on social media, ask her to learn a new skill, go for calls and find ways to post on social media on a weekly basis or even a daily basis. And for those of them that might be able to work from home, but tell you that, hey, honestly speaking, once I'm at home, I have to help my parents out, I have to help this out, I have to do a lot of things. Uh, consider reducing their workload and transferring their road work over. Be very flexible, uh, but of course set clear boundaries that might make sense. So two things, relocating job and training, especially for those who cannot work from home. So next step, once you determine who can work from home, another thing to do then is the function. So look at the function, and then back to my three A's, ability, accessibility, and agility. So for example, the ability, oh, maybe Miss B, tradition thinking, once she go home as a hairdresser or a chef, she don't have computer at home because I never needed a computer, right? Uh, and now she needs to pay internet, you know, is it reasonable for her to pay? Can the company help her subsidize some of the cost of internet at home? Think about that. Then the software, maybe uh, you don't have software, maybe you have, maybe their own computer has the software, consider doing that. And last but not least is the agility. Uh, whether you can speak to them on a one-to-one -one basis, whether they have the mental capacity to do this because it's a very stressful time for so many of us. So consider doing all of this measure so that you can make sense for the employees to work from home. All right. Now we have another session on data security, which is next Tuesday and Wednesday. I will not speak more about it today, but consider going for the session and we can talk more about that at another time. All right. So without further ado, before we open for Q&A, I would like to now pass my time over to Tian from IMDA, who will be sharing with you some of the grants and mechanism support so that she can help you with uh, thinking about productivity solution grant. Uh, Tian, please. Hi, can can hear right? Perfect. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Jia En from uh, IMDA, from the SME School Digital Program. So today I will talk to you a little bit about um, this Stay Healthy Go Digital campaign that IMDA is running currently. So Stay Healthy Go Digital, it's really um, a campaign and an effort by IMDA with together with industry partners to pull together resources for both individuals and businesses alike to continue business, continue life as much as possible during COVID. So in spite of um, you know, the circuit breaker measures that we have now, we are all staying home, but through digital tools, um, we can still uh, continue with, with life. So these are the resources that we have put together to help, um, help make it easy for individuals and businesses to access all these digital tools. So for the individuals, we have a resource page and this is the web page. And what do you see on the page? Um, there is a special Go web page which we created. Actually, we created this Go web page only when the um, circuit breaker measures were announced. Um, the whole Stay Healthy Go Digital campaign started much earlier in, um, in end March. And then when it was announced, we realized that you know, suddenly everybody needs to work from home. We need to do home-based learning. Everybody's looking for... Um, for laptops, for mobile devices, for broadband connections. And then we didn't know like, you know, which shops are open, which shops are not. So we created this page to really to help um, individuals and businesses um, access um, all these resources that they need. So you said that's about, so you can see on the right, it's about getting electronic devices. And then later on down that page, there is about, um, there's information about which, um, which telco shops are open. On the main page of this Regal Digital page, we have guides and resources for online shopping, online banking, online learning, and online entertainment. So online shopping, we've worked together with um, all the online merchants. So you have like Lazada, Shopee, we have NTC FairPrice Online. Um, so they have put together step-by-step um, -step user guides to help individuals um, learn how to use their apps and how to do their shopping online. Many of these merchants also um, have promo codes for first-time users. So even if you, you know, even if you already know, you know, all these things, you don't need a step-by-step -step guide. So we can still go and check out which of them have um, those promo codes for first-time users. 
pay online, we also have promo, uh, we also have um, step-by-step -step guides from the banks about how you can use um, their online banking apps to pay your bills online so that you don't need to you know, walk out to the AXS machine to scan and, and, and pay the bills. Um, online learning, we have a lot of um, online learning resources um, as well as online entertainment. So for businesses, we have um, a different page called Bisco Digital, and that's where we have all the, we curated all the resources for businesses. Um, on this page, we have, a, I'll go through a bit in detail later on, but we have a digital solutions directory. We have information on the different government support for digitalization. Um, you know, it includes some of, so it's not just IMDA support, but it also has the ESG support for the e-commerce and food delivery booster packages. Um, the um, man manpower support for enhanced work life grant. We also have an advisory on electronic signatures, on how you can use electronics. Was I mean, as part of business, signing documents is a very common thing. Now, how can now that we cannot, you know, everybody's working from home. How do we sign documents so that business transactions can still can take place? So there's this advisory on electronic signatures. We also have a section on um, training resources and webinars. So webinars like um the one we are having now. Um, as well as um, you know, some of the upcoming webinars. You know, just now, um, I haven't talked about some of the Microsoft webinars. There's also a Facebook series. So you can go there and, and check out so like the, the, the webinars um, next, next week as well. You can, you can go to this page and check out some of the links in there and see what all the different um, industry players have put together. Many of these webinars are related to um, solutions that we have on our digital solutions directory. So what's this digital solutions directory? Um, in partnership with um, industry players, we've curated a directory of digital solutions. This, this was created, curated together with SG Tech. Um, a directory of solutions that help businesses cope with um, COVID-19. So it's really focused, it's not just um, any digital solutions, it's really focused on the needs of businesses during this time to do remote working. So we have online collaboration, um, so, for example, G Suite tools, we have uh, Microsoft 365, and then how do you do virtual meetings? And that's where we have like Microsoft. So, the, the, the solutions that um, I've been talking about, right? Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Cisco WebEx, they are all there. So, um, these are offered by, so for example, Cisco WebEx. Cisco offered um, 90 day free trial, for example, and then this will be on there. So, you can go to this list to check out what are the different solutions available that may meet your needs. We also have a category of visitor management, and this was, actually, I mean, this, this was created before, again, before Circuit Breaker, but it's also useful for prep, thinking about after Circuit Breaker, how we want to do um, visitor management for our physical stores. So like queue management, um, sorry, this type of visitor management, temperature screening as well. Um, we also have a section on billing and paying online. So e-invoicing e and doing e-payments, how do you do that online? Um, and selling online. This is um, about e-commerce and digital marketing. How do you, you know, when your physical stores are closed, um, how can you continue selling to people online? How do you continue to um, market your, your goods and services online and reach out to your customers online? Potentially, you know, when we can, if we're able to do this well, potentially we can reach uh, a much wider audience than what our physical stores can reach. So this whole list of providers, um, I mean, this whole list of solutions, um, yeah, free, some, of, some are free, some are supported by government grant, the uh, Productivity Solutions Grant, and some are offered by industry players um, through a limited time offer. So if you click on the solutions directory um, on the web page, this is what you will see. So on the top, you can see, you know, there's remote working, visitor management, go and pay online, sell online, and, and as well as other solutions. So if you see this on the right column, the types of support, and then that's where they tell you, oh, you know, some of these come for free. Um, can be, some of them are just free for long periods of time. Some of them have uh, free trial periods. Um, and some of these solutions are supported by, um, by the Productivity Solutions Grants, and then it's indicated on the right. So this, this is a, this area, it's a remote working. It's one of the new categories that um, we are supporting under the Productivity Solutions Grant just because, um, just, just for this period to help um, SMEs tide over um, this COVID-19 period. So if you, if you click on the link, you will get, um, you, 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 you will go to the um, solutions providers page where you can find out a lot more details about what these solutions are. 
and the, the pricing and the sort of offer that you have. And some other um, solutions come with time offers. They may come with um, discounts or uh, short trial periods. So yeah, these are things which you can go and check out and see what different solutions um, you could use. So uh, one of the key support areas that the um, SME's Go Digital program has is the Productivity Solutions Grant. So if, um, if you're familiar with it, under the SME's Go Digital program, we have industry digital plans that help SMEs think about what sort of solutions and worker training will be useful for them at different stages of their business growth. And with that, we also pre-approve um, digital solutions um, that are aligned to this industry digital plans. So when an SME signs up for this um, digital solutions, you can get um, support from the government. So usually the, the support level is up to 70% meaning um, you will pay 30% of the cost. But during this period from now all the way till um, end, of, end of December, the support level has been increased to 80%. So this is for all solutions that um, qualify for the Productivity Solutions Grant. Um, just for this period, we have also expanded um, this scheme to support more solutions. Usually, you know, the government doesn't usually support uh, funding for online collaboration. Like, Microsoft 365, for example, one of the more basic, um, basic tools um, in basic office tools. We don't typically provide um, support for, for things like WebEx, for virtual meeting, meeting tools, right? And then the queue management and temperature screening either. But because this is a, a more pressing need during this time, we've also expanded the, for the PSG support to solutions in these um, four new categories. Again, this is also valid to end of this year. Um, and um, last, last week, we just um, launched, uh, I mean, we, we just newly we pre-approved um, laptop bundled online collaboration solutions. So usually um, the support that we give is for the digital solutions. So, so the software solutions. Um, it's the first time ever that we actually are providing a limited time support for laptops because we also understand, you know, suddenly overnight, um, everybody has to work from home and if you don't have a laptop, it's really difficult. So um, that's, where, that's, that's, that's where this is coming from and we've pre-approved the solutions for that. Now, how do you apply in case you're not um, familiar with this application process for the Productivity Solutions Grant? The, all the solutions that are eligible for support are on the Tech Depot, the web, the web link is there. So you can go there to check out what are the different solutions available. Then you go to the, on each, on each page for, the solu for, for each solution, there is a contact information for the vendor. You go to the vendor, you get a quotation, and then you go to the business grants portal to um, apply for the productivity solutions grant. Um, there are you know, FAQs and user guides online for you to, to help you navigate with this. But let's say if you know it's quite complicated, you don't know what to do. Help is available. You can go to um, any, you can go to the SME Digital Tech Hub. You can drop them an email. They'll get in touch with you. They can um, give you advice over the phone, um, over video conferencing. Um, this all, all these advices still happen. Or with SME centers also, they have business advisors that can advise you in navigating these. Just remember, don't um, you know get a quotation from a vendor. Don't pay the vendor for the solution and use it before you get the grant approval. You should get the grant approval first, then you, um, then you go to the vendor and then deploy and pay them, your, pay them the 20% and uh, deploy the solution. Another new um, initiative we, we just launched um, last month is the e-invoicing registration grant. Um, this is really to help businesses move away from paper invoices. This e-invoicing, um, so we have a nationwide e-invoicing network and uh, we have a few various um, accounting solutions that are connected to this network. And um, the good thing about this is that, um, you know, you can, you just send out the invoice from your, your system. It gets sent directly to your customer they, and, and they receive the, the invoice. You don't need to deal with paper invoices, don't need to send out um, physical physical papers. So for businesses that register on this um, e-invoicing network by the end of this year, 
you get a one-time two hundred dollar grant. You don't need to apply for the grant. You just need to you just need to get registered, and then um, you automatically get the grant via your PayNow corporate account. So yeah, that is um, that is the bulk of it. Ivan. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Xian. I will take over the screen now. Uh, for those of uh, us, I know just now we had some issues with the slides from uh, uh, sharing. So no to worry. We will be able to upload it on the website shortly. So don't worry, guys. We will uh, upload it. So now, guys, uh, we want to take some questions. Uh, very good timing. We have about 10 minutes. So uh, maybe for Xian, but let's answer some of the easier questions first. Uh, Xian, how do you define SME to qualify for the Productivity Solution Grant? So SMEs um, for the Productivity Solutions Grant um, need to be local SMEs. So at least 30% local shareholding. Okay. Annual so turnover. Local. Yeah. And then annual turnover less than $100 million mm -hmm. or employee size less than 200. Okay. So three conditions yeah. and one of them is all. Uh, more information I'm sure can yeah. be found on the SME. Yes, they are all. Digital website. Thank you. That's right. They're all online. Uh, all right, another question now we have from Ken is for the laptop bundle. Uh, do they have to buy it fixed? Can, I, can they work with the vendor to upgrade? Because some of the specifications uh, might not be suitable uh, for their needs. Can they upgrade it uh, with the vendor first before they buy it? Or is it the specification are fixed by the vendor? So the specification is, um, is fixed based on... Um, so the specification is, is you can find it online as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's fixed because I mean we when we pre-approve these solutions, we're trying to meet a broad base of SMEs. Okay. So that's where the that's that's how we that's how we came up with the solutions, and um, I mean that's that's how we came up with the criteria for the for the for the solutions. I mean if okay. the a lot of the criteria. So for example, I think if you go to the the one offered by Singtel, I think mm -hmm. it's a um, minimum minimum um. What do you call it? Specifications. Minimum specifications. Yes, correct. Okay. But the for for the grant process though, they cannot amend the price. Mm. So um because I mean this we, we do need I mean this is we, we do need to make it easy for SMEs to apply. So we didn't provide too much options in terms so that it's a lot easier to apply. If you give people too many options, then it's very difficult to choose. Um and also it's then easier and faster grant processing. So that's that's the reason why. Right, um, thank yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another uh, before I answer some of the questions for you, so don't want to put you on the spotlight. Uh, another question is this: uh, Can a startup uh, apply for the laptop bundle as long as it fulfill the SME criteria? A startup in IMDA eyes is still the same, right? Yeah, that's right. So yes, once again, to recap for everyone, uh, first thing first, thirty percent local shareholding. Uh, number two, uh, either employees level below 200 people or revenue below 100 mil, you can apply for the Productivity Solution Grant for Laptop Bundle. Okay? Mm. Uh, I will answer some questions now to give her a break, I know. Uh, BB has asked me a few questions. Uh, so let me start with a few first. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, um, all right. Okay, the first one, maybe I'll answer this. Uh, the question came to me was, do you think it's possible to combine working at home and outside, especially when it comes to teaching and training, like blended learning? For sure. I believe that when the economy opens again, I would think that the most forward-thinking tuition centers or education providers do that, uh, whereby some classes are done digitally and some classes are done physically in person. I think blended learning uh, or any form of business consultancy will become a, a form of Half half digital and half half uh, physical. We still need the human interaction, but half half. Another question that I have is this: um, the duration of five years for tech to change work is it shorter or faster? Well, you know, everybody research from Deloitte to McKinsey believe that automation or what I call RPA will come in about ten years later. I actually even shifted it to five years now because we are now all accustomed to working from home. So, you know, everyone who predicts technology will not be able to give you a magic finger, lah. If I can tell you, oh, you know, by twenty twenty five, uh, we will all be living in spacecraft, right? Uh, I'll be the multi millionaire of the year, lah. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. But my my point being that you know SMEs in Singapore should look at yourself and say. I got five years lead way. If this five years, I don't take the opportunity to change and digitalize my company, uh, very soon, a new competitor will come in and obstruct me and take form. In the platform era, 
uh, companies will always get destroyed. For more information, you can go and check out some of the courses available on this area or email me. It's a whole, it's my academic research in the first place. Thank you. Okay, back to uh, Tian from IMDA. Uh, another question is this, uh, e-signature. Any, mm. uh, any vendors out there for e-signature already? Um, so for e-signature, currently we don't have um, PSG support for e-signatures. Okay. But if you go to the digital solutions directory, mm -hmm. there is one e-signature solution, Adobe Sign. Mm -hmm. So there is one that, um, and they are providing a free trial period as well. Okay. So that's one that you can explore. All right. So for those of you, uh, there's one grant called the Productivity Solution Grant. Uh, IMDA and SG Tech came together to come out something called Stay Healthy, Go Digital. It's available on our IMDA website. So uh, and on the SG Tech website, where we combine a list of different solutions. A lot of them are free to help vendors and companies uh, get ahead in this time. So Productivity Solution Grants are for things they're going to buy. And we have a whole another list just to give you a sense of understanding of different solutions. All right. Hope that helps mm -hmm. clarify. Uh, okay, I'm going to, there's a lot of uh, questions. Uh, maybe more about the Productivity Solution Grant. Uh, sorry, Jian. Uh, mm. What is the maximum amount a laptop and SME can purchase via this grant? Um, for this grant, it's up to three. It, it can cover up to three laptops. Three laptops per company and up to $30,000 yes. a year, right? For this year or so. Uh, yeah, so the $30,000 is the universal cap for PSG support. Mm, so. Okay. I mean, you may apply for multiple solutions depending on how much they cost. You can have up to thirty thousand a year. The thirty thousand dollars a year, based on a company financial year or based on IMDA first April to thirty first March year. It is. Oh, actually, that one I need to check. Okay, we'll get, we'll get back <laughs> we'll to you back guys. To you, yeah. yes. This is one of the biggest questions usually that yeah. we we tend not to because different grants have different things. But anyway, guys. So for example, if you are F and B outlet and you already spent twenty thousand dollars buying, say, an automatic noodle mm. maker for this year, you are left with ten thousand dollars. Assuming you want to buy three laptops that cost four thousand, obviously you will not be able to do it because your grant amount left is only ten thousand. So that helps. So there are two caps. First thing first, your company cannot use more than $30,000 for the PSG every year. And mm -hmm. the second cap is for the laptop category, you can only buy up to three laptops. So whichever comes first for the cap. Hope that yeah. helps. So just to add, so for the laptop bundled solutions, right? There is, so there's that cap. So you should check. So for every solution, we have qualifying cost caps. Mm -hmm. So you should check with the vendor um, to confirm the, how much or how, based on their pricing, how much, how many, you know, how many, how many like licenses, for example? Because I mean, the laptop bundled solutions is such that you can buy multiple licenses, you can buy, buy multiple laptops. So what are the, what sort of the caps that um, you can buy up to based on what options you choose? Got it. Yeah. Okay, but in general, for laptop itself, it's up to three. Okay, we have a lot of uh, questions for PSG, so we'll just quickly answer them. Uh. Uh, I think biggest question, just a quick one is for Tian. Uh, laptop bundles today only show Singtel and M1. Uh, are there other vendors available or other vendors coming in soon? So currently, um, we have only pre-approved Singtel and M1. We will we'll be pre-approving more as they come in for other when as other vendors come in. Got so it. we are not like restricting it to Singtel and M1, but as more vendors come in, yes, we will then pre-approve more. Will printer be considered soon? No, not at the moment. <laughs> okay. Yeah, quick one. Uh, can you apply for laptop and e-invoicing? Uh, yes, you can because there are different categories mm -hmm. for Jolene. I'll Correct. just quickly answer that. Uh, okay, I want to ask, this is uh, the rest of the PSG, a lot of them are already in the FAQ. We shall not go through that. Uh, okay, this is good. Uh, uh, are you able to comment a bit more on e-invoicing? Uh, because I, I want to focus on the area. Mm -hmm. For e-invoicing, how can the customer accounts receivable department acknowledge my invoice if their site don't use e-invoicing? So for them to, for you to be able to send the e-invoices, both needs to have e-invoicing. Because the, the way e-invoicing works, right? Um, your system will send, the, our, we are running the nationwide network. We mm -hmm. are running on a PEPL standards. Okay. So your system will send it to um, an access point on the PEPL network. Mm -hmm. So when it's sent, it will convert to the PEPL standards. And then it is sent to your customer's access point, um, which is then sent, which is then sent to your customer system. So you you do need end to end to be on the invoicing network. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I mean the customer needs to be able to receive the invoice. Okay. 
So I think a lot of people are confusing uh, e-invoicing and e-invoice framework. Maybe let me, mm -hmm. uh, let me the technology just comment a bit here, yeah? And uh, this will be our final two questions. So e-invoice is not your Adobe, it's not you using right, your not... accounting software and producing a PDF for your invoice. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, a, <laughs> right. that is just a digital version of your invoice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the e-invoicing framework that the government is pushing all of us SME to go into mm -hmm. is a nationwide framework whereby the invoice gets sent over a, a built network. Just imagine like your IFAS, your fast transfer is a nationwide network built on an international standard from the European Union where you send an invoice to another counterpart. So the, the only way this works is that we convince our customers to also go on the e-invoicing network. So we basically standardize the invoice so that everybody, when they receive an invoice, they can also automatically pay you digitally speaking. So right now there's a grant to go into e-invoicing. I believe it's $200, right, Jian? That any yep, that's right, $200. Just by doing it. So guys, go just ahead. Right, yeah. You don't need to apply, you just register and then you Just the register, no guys, you get $200. Okay, yeah. I, I really not sound like a radio DJ for some weird reason, but... Uh, <laughs> Right, uh, just register. Uh, we'll give you the link later and do it. So e-invoicing, once again, uh, is a national framework. Uh, and yes, for YK uh, comment, it's $200 cash grant per company by using e-invoicing. Okay, so uh, I want to really take more, take more questions, but unfortunately, we don't have that much time. Uh, I'm going to just quickly pass more questions to uh, uh, Tian. Tian, can you comment on how long is the approval process for PSG? So... Um... The typical is typical approval process is a, a, a few weeks. So mm -hmm. what we are trying to do now is trying to really expedite it. So we work okay. with ESG and ESG is really trying to expedite this as fast as we can. So ASAP. Yeah. And once again, guys, do not buy the laptop before you get approval. Huh? That is not considered. You need mm -hmm. to wait for approval from yeah. ESG before you can buy the laptop. Else is disqualified. Take note of that. Uh, E-voicing question. Uh, MOE and government agency are the things that when I'm an SME vendor, I, I submit my invoice to the government. Is that considered e-invoicing framework already? Is that so, e framework already? Yeah. So you need to check if you're sending, if you're sending the e-invoice based on what Ivan described just now. So it's not the, not the submission of a PDF file, right? Mm. Um, you know, the, best to, the best is you can check with your software provider if you are on Pepo, you're sending it through them on the Pebble standard, then you are on the emails. You are uh, on the Kim, invoicing network, yeah. But for Kim's uh, so, question, as long as you submit the invoice through AGD, GAF, the, 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 the things mm. to, to get money from MOE, right? That's likely the e-invoicing network already because- uh, The vendors the and GAF. The, uh, sorry, vendors and GAF was already on the standards uh, yeah. a while back, right? Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, let me just take one or two more question. Uh, ah, this is interesting. E, is that- is the government of Singapore looking at e expense claim for employees for a nationwide framework? Expense claim. E expense claim. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so <laughs> expense claim, guys, look at our software vendors such as Payboy, they will help you do it. Now, one very good question about file software uh, that I will not answer now is from Sundra. You asked me what kind of file software or cloud software I recommend for data and for you to store. Uh, very soon after this session is over, there will be the solution toolbox. Uh, some of our, you know, one of my uh, moderator there is Sharon. Sharon comes for EasyShare. Uh, I think she will address your question later about a cloud set uh, platform for you to store files. Let me just check with my panelists uh, how long more I have. Uh, um, Okay. Um, ah, okay, let's talk about a uh, uh, question about e-invoicing in ASEAN countries. Uh, this framework, do you, uh, Zhang, do you know whether any other countries are using it? Um, so I'm not very familiar about ASEAN countries that I will also need to check and get back to you. Okay, we'll check yeah. and get back to you. Uh, okay, sorry guys, we cannot answer all your questions, but I'm sure uh, if you guys send it to info at SG Tech, we will redirect it to Tian or myself, depending on the situation. Uh, just mm -hmm. a one last thing, some of us uh, are probably, uh, sorry, let me look at one of the, one of the most common questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, yes, so what's the immediate step today to do e-invoicing? What's the, if you give them in point form, what do a SME need to do straight away today? Go and uh, check whether your software is, is, is a Pepper compliant. Okay. If it is, you go and sign up. Yeah, you need to check your, if, if you don't have, on our webpage, there is also a list of solutions that are Pepper compliant. Okay. You can see whether they, they fit the needs. 
So for example, if you have an accounting software like Zero, the, the first thing first is Zero. Just is zero. Okay, good news for those of you Zero, 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 about, is, uh, yes. zero is passport compliant. So you are already compliant. And then the next step is to go to the network website to sign up and make your company register into the e-invoicing framework. And I assume after that, you get the $20. Yeah. Okay, see, so simple guys. Yeah, that's all. All right, uh, Tian, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm sure after this, uh, everyone's going to send us a lot of email because we have more than 20 questions not answered yet. Uh, appreciate the help. So guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break, but this break is going to pass it over to the solution toolbox now where you can see live demos of different solutions available. But as we take this toilet break, take out your phone, scan this QR code right now to do the survey. We really need you guys to help us do the survey. All right, so take out your phone and scan the QR code now to do the survey. All right, thank you so much guys and we'll see you in about a minute time. All right, do the survey. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.